we get over like around 60 70 frames per second and if i just take this glass up here and we can see that it acts like the text hey guys welcome to a new video on this opencv cuda tutorial in this video here we're going to do half transformations on the gpu here in c++ but first of all remember to join the discord server i'll link to it down in the description here you can come join the channel chat with us about computer vision deep learning artificial intelligence and so on you can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small amount of fee and everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel so thank you guys so now we're just going to the opencv documentation here to like see the different kind of classes and functions that we actually like have for these half transformations inside of the cuda accelerate computer vision module so this video here we're going to use the half circuit detector uh, but we can do the exact same thing with the half line detector and half segment detector so the, it is exactly the same like how we set it up how we apply the different kind of things but we can both detect circles lines and segments and then down here we can actually like see first of all the functions that we need to set up so we need to create like for example a uh, cuda create half circle detector we have some different kind of parameters that we need to set for a half circle detector um, and then we can actually like go inside here and see what it does what the different kind of inputs are uh, and what the outputs are and how we can actually like apply this half circle detector on our image that we get in from either the webcam or that we load into our program so here we can see the different kind of parameters so first it takes like a dp parameter so it's the inverse ratio of the accumulator resolution to the image resolution so if you want to know more about these different kind of parameters what they are like what is accumulator resolution what is the candy threshold what is a candy s detector and so on make sure to go into the computer vision tutorial that i have where we go into details with the theory behind the computer vision techniques and methods that we're using so throughout this tutorial with the opensv cuda module we're just going to use the methods uh, and we don't go go and or like we don't dive deep into uh, the theory behind these techniques or what these different kind of values are so we have a minimum distance here between the centers of the detected circles then we have a candy threshold values we also have a votes threshold so we can see here the accumulator threshold for circle centers at a detected state so we can see the smaller it is the more false circles may be detected so if you get a lot of false positives um, and stuff like that we can try to play around with this vote threshold value we can also set a minimum radius or maximum radius for the circles that we want to detect so if you want to detect some some certain some like um, some like certain different kind of like circles in your image or in your own applications you can go and tune these parameters so we only get those circles and also reduce the false positives of the circle detections you can also define the maximum number of output circles that you want to detect so if you only want to detect like 10 20 2 1 circles in your image you can go in set that value uh, to that and it will only detect uh, that many circles that you set in the algorithm so let's jump into this fun part here in visual studio code where i'm going to show you how we can actually like set it up how we can set up the half circle detector apply that circle transformation on our image and then how we can see the output and the results at the end of the video so first of all here we're just going to include all of these OMSV CUDA, uh, CUDA modules as in all the other videos and then we're going to have a video capture here with our webcam we have a random number because we want to draw the circles with random colors so we're just going to have this random generator then we can actually like print out the CUDA device info so if it is first time you're running the GPU on your computer uh, go print out the CUDA device information so you know that it is set up correctly and it's actually like using the, the, the correct CPU or like TPU on your computer then we have a matrix here for image and then we know that we need to set up these matrices here for the gpu to actually like be able to apply these algorithms here on the gpu or like the methods or functions from uh, opcv so we have cuda colon colon gpu mat we're going to have a matrix for our image we're going to have a grayscale image matrix and then we're also going to have a matrix here for the circles that we're detecting on the gpu then we can have a vector here which will just contain a vector of of, of three values so we have three flowing points which will be our circles so this will just be a vector that contains all the circles that were detected from the gpu that we can then download it down to and actually like then display those circles on our original image that we're detecting circles on so here we're just going to have this cap a dot is is opened so while our webcam is open we're just going to run inside this wire loop at the end of the program if we hit q at any point in our program it will terminate our program and and break off the wire loop we will we, we will release our webcam and we'll destroy all the windows that we have opened up with opencv here so here first of all we're going to start a timer as well we're at the bottom of the program we're going to end the timer so we can actually like get the number of frames per second so we can see how fast is this algorithm running how fast are we detecting circles 
on our GPU, then we can actually act like also run it on the CPU, uh, compare these different kind of values. So we will actually like see how many frames per second and or like how much we actually like speed up our algorithms um, when we're running our algorithms or methods on the GPU compared to the CPU. So if you're using real-time applications or you just want to run, run like large algorithms or you just want to run really, really fast algorithms, make sure to use the GPU. It's just so much faster and we can even speed up our algorithms and processes by up to 30 times, depending on your GPU and CPU of course. So here we're just going to read our image from a webcam. Then we, need, then we know that we need to upload our image here to the GPU. So the idea behind using the GPU here is that we upload our image to the GPU. We do all of the processing on our GPU. And then when we're done processing or using the methods on our GPU image, then we download it down again to the actual like CPU image that we can then show with ImShow. So here we are, first of all, we're going to convert our color from PGR to a grayscale image because we need to do that uh, when we use the half transform with the GPU. Then first of all, we need to apply some image filtering, as you know from the previous videos, how we can set that up. So we're just going to do that fast. And then we're going down to the act like circle detection. So here we just have this auto keyword. So we create this Gaussian filter and we're just going to call this Gaussian filter. And then we're going to set that equal to CUDA. We're going to add the CUDA module, colon, colon, create Gaussian filter. And then we need to specify the different kind of like data, data types. Uh, that we actually use for filters and the input image. So we're going to have this a CV underscore eight U C one. So we have an unsigned um, eight bit integer and we have, we're operating with one channel because we just grayscaled our image. Then we need to specify the exact same thing here for our output. So we're just going to copy paste it. And this will be the second parameter. And then our third parameter will be our kernel size. So it will just be a free bar free kernel that we're going to apply. And then the last parameter here is this Sigma value here, which we're just going to set equal to one. And this is default. Then to actually like apply the filter, we know that we can just uh, hit this uh, Gaussian filter. And then we just have this error operator because we have actually like created this pointer with our image filter. Then we can hit apply. So this will be the method uh, apply. And then we need to specify the image that we actually like want to apply this to. And also uh, the grayscale image here, which will be the input and the output uh, where we actually like want to apply this Gaussian filter. So this is just to reduce some of the noise from our image that we get in from the webcam. So we get like nicer and smoother um, corners. So it, 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 we can easily detect circles in our image and we will not get that many false positives and so on. So now we have filled our image. So now we can go down here and actually like create the circle detector. And to do that, we're just going to have this auto keyword here again, because the, all the ideas here, when we're creating these different kind of things, we're just going to create a pointer with either like the Gaussian filter, um, half circle detector and so on. So we're going to have this auto keyword. We're going to call this circle, circle detection. And then we're going to set that equal to CUDA colon colon. And then we can just use this function that I showed you um, um, showed you in the OpenCV documentation. So we're going to have create and then we have hub circles detector. We're going to set the different kind of input parameters as you can see up here at the top. So these are in exactly the same arguments here that we passed to a method that I just showed you in the documentation. So we're going to, I'm just going to set them here and you can go read them up in the documentation. So we're going to set this to one. We're going to set it to 100, 120. We have 50, then we have one and then we have 50. And then we're just going to detect, let's say, um, five circles here in an image. So this will be the maximum number of circles at the end. And to actually like apply this circle detection here, instead of apply, then we're going to use the, um, the, um, the detect method. So here we're just going to have this circle detector. What did we call it? We call it circle detection. Circle detection. And then we have the error operator and then we have detect. And then on the image that we actually like want to detect it on. So we want to detect uh, the circles on our grayscale image. And now we need to specify where we actually like want to store the circles that were detected with this half, tra uh, half uh, circle transformation. So here we need a comma. So we have a grayscale image and then we're going to act like store our circles in our GPU matrix. So now we have everything here. We need to resize our circles before we can actually download it down to our CPU here again. So I'm just going to do that. So we have circles dot resize. So we're going to resize our circles. Uh, so we need to specify the circle size of our GPU matrix. So we're just going to, to like, like resize our circles, um, our circles on the CPU to the si same size as on the GPU. So we can actually like just put it into our vector and then later draw our circles that were detected. 
So here we're just going to have this size and then we have the width here of, um, of our GPU. So now we have resized it. So now we can just go down here and have an if statement and check if the circles are empty. And this will be the circles vector. So circles is dot empty. So if it's empty, we're just going to go down here. So if it's not empty, it's actually like if it's not empty, then we can go down uh, and download our actual like detect the circles on the GPU to the CPU. So if 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 the circles is not empty, so if we have detected any circles in the image, then we're going to download it from the from the GPU to the CPU. So here we're just going to have the circles GPU dot row. So we're going to take the zero uh, zero row here of our circles detected on the GPU. And then we're just going to download it here to our matrix, to our matrix here. And then inside of the matrix, we're going to have these circles. We can, again, we need to reshape them first of all. So we're going to reshape, reshape, and then we need to specify three comma one, because these are the values that we need to store for the circles detected as we know up from the vector. So we have a vector of three values here, of three photo floating point values. So this is the exact same thing that we need to specify down here at the bottom. So now we have to like have this, we're going to um, have the semicolon so we can actually like end this off. So now we have act like this, our circles detected, downloaded down to our circles vector here. So we have a matrix here of the circles. So this will just be our vector with all the circles that were detected in our image with this half circle detector that we created on the GPU. So down here we have actually like now detected our circles. Then we go down here in our for loop, run through all the circles that were detected. So we're going to take circles.size. Then we just have a for loop running from zero to up to the size here of the circles. We're going to create a random B value. We're going to create a random G value and a random R value. So we actually like draw a different colors and like random colors for all the circles that we're going to detect in our image. Then we're just going to take um, one circle at a time. So we're going to take uh, the ith element here of our circles and they will just call that sir. And then we're just going to use the OMCV method circle, circle to actually like draw a circle on our image. And the point here where we actually want to draw a circle is the coordinates. So the zero of the element and the first element here will just be the X and Y. It will be the X, Y coordinate of the center or like uh, like center of our detected circle. And then the third element here or like the second element here um, in our circle, which is the third value that we're storing in this vector. It will, it will actually be the radius of that circle. So this is just how we can draw the circles that we detected um, in, with our half transform. Then we're going to put out the text for the number of frames per second. And we're also going to show our image with the circles that we have detected um, up here. So now we can just build a program here um, at the end. And we can see that the build finished with exit code zero. So we have actually successfully built a program. And now we can just run it and see the results of our half circle detector here. Uh, with the GPU. So now we can see we open up the image frame, we get like around 60, 70 frames per second. And if I just take this glass up here and we can see that it actually like detects these different kind of circles. We have a maximum number of circles here, which we set equal to five. So we're only detecting five circles here um, in our image. We can actually see it detects a lot of different kind of circles around this glass here. So it both detects like the inner circle, the outer circle and so on. So if you want to reduce the number of, of circles here, and we maybe only wanted to take one circle, we can play around with the parameters in our circle detector. Um, we could maybe like have the, the distance between the circles need to be greater than some threshold value that we set. So depending on your application, you can go into the, uh, to the actual like arguments, play around with those until you'll get the desired results uh, that you want for your applications. So this is really nice. We can do it for use for a lot of different kind of things. And we can also see like how fast it is to run on the GPU uh, compared to the CPU, which will slow down the process um, a lot more. It will only might maybe run around like 10, 20 frames per second, where if you have a real time applications and you just want to do like simple, a uh, simple and fast circle detecting, uh, circle detections, you can use this here. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. So you know when I upload a new video in this OMSV CUDA module tutorial here because it's really nice that we can use the GPU to speed up our processes and algorithms, especially now when we have like larger and more complicated algorithms that we want to run. And then simultaneously, we want to run them in real time applications. So it's really important and it's also just really nice to know how to do it because 
exactly like the same number of lines of code that we need to write. We just need to do it in another way of our image to GPU, write the same methods or like kind of the same method that is the same names, but we need to set it up in a different way. And then we need to download our results later on again. So again, yeah, thanks for watching this video here, guys. And I'll link to one of the other tutorials I have on my channel up here or else I'll see you next week, guys. Bye for now.